investigation. But let's take it back a little bit. It all started on December 2nd. The affidavit details show that Jamila's last phone call to 911 mentioned her ex-boyfriend allegedly breaking into her home, screaming, and she she eventually was running, was ran over before the end of the call. On December 3rd, the affidavit then notes that her mom, Tina McCraw, over over before the end of the call. On December 3rd, the affidavit then notes that her mom, Tina McCraw, reported her missing in the next day on December 4th. The press release from the Aiken County Sheriff's Office noted both Jamila and Daniel Harmon as missing. December 5th, the affidavit mentions the Sheriff's Office finding Harmon with his missing black Dodge Charger at a property off, Carpen off Carpentersville Road in North Augusta. Then on December 6th, the affidavit details an executed search warrant on the Dodge Charger with suspected blood found inside of the trunk and parts of, of blood on a spare tire also inside the trunk. Now, according to the arrest warrants, Brian Hampton Jr. did help Daniel Harmon with disposing of Jamila's body, they believe, from any, anywhere from the timeline of December 2nd to December 4th. But again, they just arrested a third person, Clyde Henley, um, as a, an accessory after the fact to her murder. So a lot going on in this case, but coming up all new tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock, we're hearing from the Aiken County Sheriff's Office and the private investigator who's speaking on behalf of Tina. That's the mom's side of Jamila's family. Just so, you know, the closure that they are being able to provide and, and the start to healing. Okay, still a lot to learn here, Hallie. Thanks for the update there live at the Aiken County Sheriff's Office. We start show off this midday with some breaking news out of Aiken. Deputies say the remains of the missing mother, Jamila Smith, have been found. In the new report from the... Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak Wadash, double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing the sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among their number, which are the Hebrews, the life foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And yeah, I mean, I don't got it, I don't got a title for this particular epistle right now, but you know, like. Like the brothers have been getting into for these past two weeks with all these these news stories popping up you israelite sisters of the 12 tribes y'all better get in order y'all better get y'all shit together and turn back to yahweh bashmi al shah man because look the judgment's going out and, and yahweh bashmi al shah <laughs> he does not care all right now the reason why this story should be potent to you uh to you um you biblical israelite women all right, of the tribes, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American women, as well as the speckled bird, is because a lot of our women got this thing in their head where, you know, they get puffed up with their beauty and they think shit can't happen to them. That's why, you know, I can speak for myself personally. In my city, you know, the women definitely walk around, you know, damn near butt-ass naked. So these are one of those things where it's like, look, it's time for Jake to grow the fuck up, man. Like, the... <laughs> Look, we got the Lord got spirits created for vengeance, man. There's a lot of bugged out Jakes out here. And it already goes without saying that these Edomites are bugged out. You know, the Edomites being the self-proclaimed so-called white men who are not white because they're not spiritually pure nor the color of a cloud, but the red Hebrew Edomite that also be called the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks of. These are the physical incarnations of the spiritual demon Satan. So it's nothing to them to do wicked stuff. All right. This is why um, the, the, uh, the scriptures um, describe them as bloody men. But anyway, let me get this first precept. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 30. And it reads, Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, she shall be praised. All right, now why am I getting this scripture first and foremost? Because a lot of our women, you know, they, they're vain as shit. You know, they, they, they uh, got puffed up by social media and by, you know, taking selfies and having a bunch of simps puff their head up, all this other type of stuff. But they don't ever really self-reflect, you know, accountability is, is kryptonite to our women, you know, women in general, but this isn't about all women, this is about our women first and foremost of the 12 tribes, you know, because this whole ministry is geared towards the true biblical Hebrew Israelites repenting and turning back to your Howard Bashmi al that they might get saved from the coming judgment. All right, the mandatory implementation of the MOTB, 
all right, uh, martial law, Jacob Trouble, FEMA camps, and the ICBM nuclear missiles to set it all off, you know. It's locked. But yeah, this is the whole point of this ministry, man. Like, turning our people back to your how about me out shot. And the two thirds that don't turn back, they're going to get deleted, man. They're going to get all types of gruesome judgments. And the Lord is not going to care if you're a beautiful uh, uh, Hebrew Israelite woman of the 12 tribes. And it's not because um, this particular girl wasn't, she didn't return back to the truth. It's, well, Salaki, I'll take that back. Let me um, rephrase what I said. It's not because, oh, she's dressed in a certain type of way in XYZ that she got deleted like oh yeah she's not wearing a head wrap and it no it's not even about that it's about the simple fact of look the lord he's not playing anymore or well, he's never been playing but yahweh bash me out shy he has his men out on the highways and the byways risking their lives and freedom to preach this gospel and two-thirds of our people they're not going to listen they're not going to repent so the judgment's going to have to go out one way or the other man but yeah jake, got to, jake is going to have to realize that it's never been a time to play and the lord don't care about like and the brothers have said this recently the lord don't care that you got d-cup titties a pretty face thick lips all that other type of stuff he made these things what the hell does that matter to you how about me out shy he wants you to get right and repent he doesn't give a shit about the body he doesn't give a shit about any of those things he cares about the inward uh person all right he doesn't care about how pretty you are because let's keep it frank some of the some of our most prettiest women have been the most bugged out and wicked women to deal with at all you know some of our you know not some of a good number of our women is the reason why a lot of jake men are just going to deal with the heathen women our women are just out of order man like they don't understand that you know you tell them you basically you do your job as a man and you put them in order you you know you let you lay the law down and you know they act like they're being oppressed you tell them don't dress a certain way and then all of a sudden uh they feel like you you uh you're oppressing them you worse than the slave master all types of crazy shit all right so you know just keeping that in mind you sisters out there man like don't get don't if you out here just dressing on any type of way i recommend you stop that shit repent and turn back to your how about me all right come under the leadership of a, of a righteous man of your how about me all all right if the lord ain't give you one yet then keep on praying and you know uh, just get right with the with the men that's in your life that your how about your shot has around you if you got a father that's in order you know well you know so like you're not in order but if you have a father that's basically you know in your life he may not be necessarily in the truth or uncle or brother or older cousin or whatever the case may be and you know they looking out for you then you know just incline your ear to that all right because even us brothers in the truth even though we have relatives that's not in the truth the lord all right, by, by probably uh, applying these precepts, we understand how to take the meat and spit out the bones, so to speak, when it comes to advice or whatever wisdom individuals may try to give us. We know that, OK, yeah, even if they're not in the truth, the Lord put some level of um, knowledge inside of them through maybe life experience that they can give you that you can just filter out the rest of that through the scriptures. And if you um, and for the sisters that's in the truth, you know, don't get so caught up in the fact of like, oh, yeah. I dress this way, I dress virtuously, I do this and that. You don't want to be in that mindset of the of the Pharisees, the wicked Pharisees anyway. Like our lawyer, how wish I gave a parable about? Let me get that precept in a minute. Salakia, one moment. Let me take care of this. Come on. Okay, let me see. This publican. All right. This is the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 9. The body of Bashmi Al Shah, and it reads, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Okay? Verse 10. And this is real letters was Lord Yahweh Shah speaking, whom the Lord ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Two men went up into the temple to pray. Thus with himself, Slakia, to pray this, this the one a Pharisee and the other a publican the pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself the most high well, salakia yahweh i thank thee that i am not as other men are extortioners unjust adulterers or even as this publican i fast twice in the week i give tithes of all that i possess and the publican standing afar off would not so salakia would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven 
but smote upon his breast, saying, Yahweh, be merciful to me, a sinner. Okay? Let me see what else I got right here. Verse 14. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Right. Now, we understand that, like we have to say in a, a few of these other precepts, when you see he or the man or X, Y, Z, some precepts are directly referring to just men and other precepts. It goes without saying that if it's talking about a man, it's definitely talking about a woman. All right. So the point of this precept is a lot of our women, for one reason or the other, they're haughty. OK, this is why the Lord is going to bring Isaiah 4 and 1 on this side. And to get that understanding, you got to get Isaiah, the third chapter, start at the 16th verse first, and then it leads into Isaiah 4 and 1. But basically, whether you haughty because you look pretty or whatever, and you're in the world and you get a lot of male attention and you, didn't, you got a lot of bodies, which is nothing to be proud about, or you haughty because, okay, the Lord called you into this truth, the Lord's not dealing with the proud, man. Now, there's a certain dignity that comes with knowing that you're a Hebrew Israelite. Don't get me wrong, but you still got to do things decently and in order. You don't want to be caught out here like that because this could happen to a Jake that, that knows that they're an Israelite or a Jake that don't know. It's all about whether or not you're one of the elect. All right. And the elect, they're going to have a certain way of carrying themselves that is becoming of their heritage. They're not going to just do it because it's a fad or, you know, for any arrogant reasons. All right. You know, and you got to keep this in mind. The Lord doesn't care about... uh. <laughs> He doesn't care that you got d cups. He's not going to say, oh, look at them titties. I made them, but look at them titties. I can't judge her. Nah, he's going to put you to death if you are wicked. All right, because he looks at the inward person. Everybody comes back in the third and fourth generation. So if you was a wicked, a witch back then or a feminist or just out of order back then, you know what I'm saying? The Lord brought you back to take uh, to face judgment. Now, if you was righteous back then, you know, if you was uh, Sarah or Re Re Rebecca or Leah, Rachel, uh, Hannah, any of these righteous women, Abigail, all right, then the Lord is bringing you back in your lot. But ultimately, since we don't know, that's why this is part of the reasons why the scripture says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. All right. Let me go ahead and get the um this other precept. I think it's first Corinthians chapter eight. I ain't got it in a while. Um no, Salaki. It's first Corinthians chapter five. Second Corinthians. Yep. The audio about shot. This is the book of Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse eleven, and it reads, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto the most high, and our trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Right, this is why the men of the Lord are out here, man. Because our people tend to think that everything's supposed to be handed to them on a on a silver platter with with you know with sugar and honey like nah man look sometimes jake needs to be cussed the fuck out sometimes jake needs to see some gruesome stuff to wake up because despite all these stories going out jake still like uh, one of the brothers said yesterday kicking a can down the street jake still takes things for a joke jake still thinks that we in 1990 something or that we still in the party era look this this country is circling the drain women out here getting raped on the street on, on the concrete ground of dirty ass new york Jake need to get their shit together, man. And for you sisters that's really trying to serve your how about me on shot and truth and sincerity, stop walking outside damn near naked, man. Like the woman that, that that happened to in New York wasn't even nowhere near as you know what I'm saying. She was fully dressed for the most part. I believe that she was supposed to be, you know, like um like a stud or whatever. But whatever the case may be, you know what I'm saying? Like if that happened to somebody fully dressed, what chance do you women have that's just out here bullshitting on your phone, getting drunk every Saturday night? tighten up man like this it's not a game and for those of you sisters that have that have men in your life whether he's a believing man or not you know what i'm saying get your stuff together because if he tells you not to go somewhere it, just, it would behoove you to listen because he can't like like come on man women have been saying this for quite some time even women of the older generation it's not even in the truth a man a, um I'll put it like this. An Israelite man, a so-called Negro, Latino, Native American man is not going to protect a woman that he, that won't listen. If you don't listen, we can't protect you. All right. It's simple. The same way if your how about well, similar to how if your how about me shot gives us uh, the way the way of life to walk in and we don't listen. OK, then we got to face judgment. He gave us the righteous way to walk. And if we decide to walk in the opposite way, then we we end up in a bad situation. 
But this right here should put fear enough in your heart to get right and stop fucking around, man. If you know that there's, if you know that um, you need to get right, then get right. Stop messing around. Because the Lord, he's not going to spare you because you're pretty or like, this is another reason why we say simps got to go too. Because women are going to follow whatever program that the man that they dealing with is on, whether y'all respect them or not. You know what I'm saying? Even when it comes, like when it comes to men that you deal with, that you are attracted to or whatever, you know what I'm saying? You follow his program. If he's a wicked ass nigga, you're going to be a wicked ass hoe. And if, you, if you're dealing with a righteous man, if you how about me on shot, if he's righteous, you're going to be righteous. All right? Now, when it comes to the simps, you don't respect the simps. You probably just using them for money or whatever. But by them not putting their foot down, you become even worse of a person. You think that all men are like that. And then you end up in a situation like this girl. And I'm not saying she did anything. I don't know her personally. But some, something about her didn't please you how about me out shot. Whether it was some sins of the past life or sins of this life and the past life put together or just sins of this life. Who knows? The Lord is not dealing with the haughtiness, man. And he's definitely not dealing with anybody that's wasting time because enough of the news, enough of the, the gospel has been preached. Everybody knows who the, the true biblical Hebrew Israelites are, man. And if Jake want to keep on sitting right here being heathen, like, oh, no, I'm African. I'm, I'm American. Okay, the Lord's going to treat you like that. He's going to show you the judgment that that um these heathen are going to get. Let me get this precept right here. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 23, and it reads, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out to the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Now, let me go ahead and get this word compel, since Jake always wants to cry about, Oh, well, you guys are fear-mongering. Okay, nigga. All right. Let's see what this word is right here. Strong's G315. Anakadzo. Anakadzo. Anakadzo, outline of biblical usage to necessitate, compel, drive to, constrain, by force, threats, etc., by permission, entreaties, etc., by other means. So right here, Jake, this is what the point is. This is why the, this is why Yahweh Bashmi on Shah through the Rakhak with the Holy Spirit raised up his men, starting with our apostles and others, the great millstone, and those on down to teach the likewise doctrine to go out to the highways and the hedges to compel you to the marriage what is the marriage the marriage supper of the lamb when our lord yahweh shah returns so you can get right and get yourself ready for when our lord returns spiritually all right so yeah like if, I, if we just say like one of the brothers said yesterday on a gms uh feed the feed the uh, flock if you if jake was just saying hey hey brothers and sisters you need to repent you wouldn't listen you're not even listening now but if we say hey get your shit together the lord's gonna blow this place up then that that necessitates um urgency something that jake has a problem with doing but that's all I have for this lesson. Hopefully, hopefully this uh, epistle was exhorting and edifying to the elected of the nation of Israel. Once again, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bashem, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors as always to the apostle, and those a great millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect. Shalom.